Welcome in this video where we are going to implement the reptile paper. So this is useful for meta learning, so learning to learn. Uh, and by the end of this video, these are the results we'll get. So if you look at the paper, this is a figure very similar uh, to one that is presented in the paper. So after training, uh, after running the reptile algorithm, this is uh, the function represented by the neural network that we've learned, so in blue. So basically, this if we take the weights that we've learned with the reptile algorithm uh, and we feed, um, so uh, on our neural network represent the function. So for those values of x on the x axis, we, we get those values on y, on the y axis. Uh, and when we uh, then show new data points from a new signal in green uh, to the uh, learn neural network and we train it uh, during only a few uh, gradient descent steps, the neural network is able to quickly uh, to quickly uh, move from the blue function to the green function. Uh, so uh, we are yeah we are learning to learn, we are learning the task of uh, learning sinusoidal, sinusoidal active uh, functions uh, with neural networks. And it's not a, an easy task. It's it, it sounds easy. It's not so easy when you do um, uh, when when you train a neural network to do that uh, on a single function. So by showing a lot of uh, functions to a neural network. The neural network learns a prior from those functions that he, he has seen uh, during training, and then when he sees a new one, he is able to adapt quickly. So uh, let's uh, dive into the code directly. So to implement our neural network, we'll use PyTorch. Uh, I'm also importing a few other libraries, such as NumPy and uh, Matplotlib, for plotting the results. Um, let's create the, uh, the functions that will uh, uh, that, 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 that will run the reptile algorithm. So it will be very similar to the, to the code from the paper. You will see that it's super easy to implement. So first we're taking a model that will be an n.module. So I run one network to train. The number of iteration we need to train for, which will be an integer. Um, and then we take two functions. So these are callables. We uh, take a function sample task to sample the task. Um, so if we were just doing a uh, regular machine learning, we would have a, a function sample batch to sample a batch of data. But in that case, we are, uh, we are learning to learn. So we are not sampling data points, but we are sampling tasks. And when we have a task, we also need another function, a function to perform car training steps. Um, but we will come to that in a moment. k equal to 1, which is the number of, uh, of k training steps. We'll uh, see that in a moment. On epsilon is the learning rate for the author uh, objective. So the learning rate for the uh, reptile algorithm. So uh, let's uh, dive into the implementation. So we iterate, of course, over the number of iterations. First, we sample the task. And then we perform k training steps. So on the task that we've sampled, we perform k training steps. So this is the parameter k. How many epochs we do for training uh, on that task. And we train not on our model, but on a, uh, on a copy of our model. So why is that? It's because the weight of our model will be uh, will be altered during this uh, training uh, procedure, and we don't want our uh, model parameter weight to be uh, modified. So we uh, feed a copy of the model so that the parameters are unchanged, and we get after calling this function, we get back the uh, new weight after training. And now we can iterate over the model parameters on the uh, returned uh, new weight. And we can uh, do the gradient update rule. So p plus equal the learning, learning weight times g minus p. So the, uh, the new weight minus the previous weight. So this is our gradient update rule. And this is just as simple as that. Very simple. If you look at the pseudocode, you will see that the implementation is straightforward from it. Uh, so first, we need to create our model. That will be a MLP uh, for the uh, toy problem from the paper. So we are doing a 1D regression problem. So we are taking uh, coordinate x as input and we uh, output uh, the function value at that uh, point x. Uh, yeah, no, nothing much to say, just a simple MLP. Then we can uh, create the sample task function. And basically, you see, we do, not, uh, we do not define what is a task. We just create a function sample task. In that case, uh, again, we are implementing a toy, paper from the, um, a toy problem from the paper. So we are just uh, sampling x between minus 5 and 5, and we compute, uh, we generate um, a function randomly. So that will be a sinusoidal function, and we sample its amplitude and its phase uh, randomly. 
and then we return x, y on the last function to use for this task. And then we have another function, perform k training steps, that is taking the model to optimize, the task to optimize the model on, k, which is the number of uh, epochs we need to do on the batch size. And therefore, we can see that um, in the perform k training steps, we, uh, we, uh, we, we extract values from the task, but in the uh, reptile implementation, uh, whatever the task was, uh, it was not an issue. So basically, anyone that wants to use my algorithm, it just needs to uh, define a function sample task, another function perform k training steps. It can uh, return anything he wants as long it, as it is consistent between the two functions. But the reptil will not take that into account. Um, yeah, so that gives uh, an implementation that is uh, that is roughly generic. Uh, on the four perform k training steps is pretty easy. We just uh, yeah we do regular training in PyTorch. So we have our, our optimizer, our model, we have our training data. Uh, here we compute the number of epochs. So based on the uh, uh, shape of the training data on on the batch size, we we can iterate over the number of epochs. So we sample a mini batch. We compute the MSE loss or any loss uh, depending on the uh, on the task. Uh, and then we do a gradient update. And then we can put all the pieces together. So we create a model, we train it with the reptile algorithm for 30,000 uh, steps. And then what we do after training, we check uh, the function that we've learned. So we sample x between minus five and five. We create the predictions at that point. So by uh, feeding the axes to the model, uh, on the, the, therefore this y pred before. So before, so because now I will update my model with a new task uh, to see how it adapts uh, on a new task. But before doing the ad adaptation, I'm checking the function represented by my model. And now what I'm doing, I'm sampling a new task. Uh, I'm extracting uh, values from the new task. And then I'm uh, training uh, the model on my new task. So I'm uh, doing 30 training steps on the new task. Uh, and therefore, I, uh, and then I'm checking the uh, y that are predicted after uh, the retraining. So now, now in y prep before, I have the um, I have the function represented by the neural network before training. I also have now the value after training. Uh, on now, I can plot everything. So the va the function before training, the function after training, on the true function, um, the true new task. Uh, so on the for it will uh, give a plot similar to the one I showed you previously. Uh, on the for that's it. So very simple. Uh, most of the uh, code can be done in 10 lines of code. Uh, the, other, uh, the other modules are just for, uh, for implementing the toy problem from the paper. But you can see it's super easy um, and uh, very efficient. So if you have an uh, application to that, uh, do not hesitate to share in the comments your uh, implementation and uh, some links to some GitHub uh, to see a uh, useful implementation of that. Uh, I really hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, if it was, please leave the thumbs up. It uh, really helps and it helps other people to discover this content uh, and also subscribe for more content like that.